Hello everyone, uh, my name is Crispin Pemberton. Uh, I had the great privilege of being a vicar of St Barnabas in the middle of the 1990s for four years. Um, this has, was a time that left us with very many happy memories of, of wonderful people uh, and especially uh, of the birth of our two children in Gloucester. Uh, I hope and pray that this year for all of you and for Sarah, your current vicar, will be a time of great celebration on all that has been done in God's name in St Barnabas and that he will continue to bless you in the years ahead. I send you all my love and my very best wishes for the future. God bless you all. Hello. My name is Marilyn Charland, and I was Vicar of St Barnabas for eight years from 1998. I was the first woman in Gloucester to be appointed Vicar and it caused quite a flutter. You might remember that women back then were not considered suitable for such a high position. Since then of course the Church has approved three more women as Vicars of St Barnabas and I wish Sarah well as she leads you forward. My hearty congratulations as you celebrate your 80th anniversary. I was vicar when we celebrated the 60th and people came in droves to enjoy the displays and so on. What a shame that Covid has stopped us being physically together this time. When I came to the church the interior was black with soot having been severely damaged by fire. The roof was also in a state of real disrepair. So we set to immediately, appointed a restoration committee and started fundraising. The church members and community were generous in their prayers, time, effort, money. And in three years we raised over £250,000 and the church was restored. Marvellous. The bishop was so pleased, he even made me a canon. Wow. During all of that, we set up a new Sunday school, a youth club, a monthly family praise service, a Wednesday lunch club. And above all, we had lots of fun. Harvest suppers, barn dances, spring and autumn fairs, concerts, fashion parades, dinner dances and parties. Throughout, I had the strong support of my colleagues, Alan Gage and Ray Jewell. And of course, the Lord was in all of those things, as well as in our regular worship. So thank you, St Barnabas, and thank you, Lord, for those unforgettable years. And congratulations once again. Bye. Well, hello. I'm Reverend Helen Salmon, and delighted to be sharing in this celebration with you. I've had two very important periods of my life at St Barnabas. I was born in the parish along the Stroud Road and as a child my father was the church warden and my mother very involved in the Mother's Union. So my very early memories of life are actually at St Barnabas Church. I think I learnt to count by counting the collection in the vestry and I'm still quite good at tidying hymn books. There was a memorable occasion when I was about five or six when I had a feeling that I was a bit like Jesus. My parents both went home from church independently, assuming that I was travelling with the other one. Uh, when they got home, of course, I wasn't there. I was being looked after at church by a very kind lady, for whom I'm still very grateful. But roll on 40 plus years, after a professional life as a doctor, and then a change to ordained ministry and I came back to St Barnabas in 2007 as the vicar. That was really exciting for me to go back to the community where I'd been brought up, but slightly disconcerting when my lovely new members of the congregation warmly greeted me and told me they remembered me well in a pushchair. If I could summarise those five years as the vicar of St Barnabas, I think I'd sum them up in toast, yes genuine toast. It started um, after the eight o'clock communion service which I used to take weekly 
and decided it would be nicer rather than go back to the vicarage to make a pot of coffee in church and I invited other people to stay with me. Within a few weeks we had a very posh filtered coffee pot. A few weeks later we'd bought two cheap toasters and a few weeks after that we had a large table, a tablecloth, some wonderful homemade marmalade that was being donated and the most rapid congregational growth I think I've ever been part of. The toast then was continued on a Friday when it became part of the life of Little Church, when young families, young children used to come for stories, songs and playtime and the toasters would go on again. There was a memorable Friday when I had a funeral coming into church at midday and I had to ask the little church families to tidy up and leave a bit earlier than usual. As the congregation arrived for the funeral, somebody turned to me and said, Vicar, why does your church smell of toast? Well, I answered that there were many worse things a church could smell of. That smell of toast is to me a smell of welcome and hospitality not just of the church, but the welcome and the hospitality that God gives to all of us as we approach his kingdom. And I wonder, I wonder if heaven might smell of toast as well. And I want to say thank you to all of you who were part of those very fulfilling and toast-filled years at St Barnabas. Hello. Many congratulations on this 80th anniversary of St Barnabas Church. I'm delighted to send my very best wishes to you all. Where have the last five years gone since the 75th celebration? As a family of faith, you have so much to thank God for, not least for his love for you all and your love for each other. I am in no doubt that St Barnabas will continue to grow in ministry, with each person recognising the gifts they have been given and each one offering these to make the church complete, Christ-centred and Christ-like, strong and fruitful. Martin, Becky and I send our love and pray God's blessing for you all, most especially today. Take care. God bless. Hello. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sarah and I've been vicar of St Barnabas for just six months, but before that I was a curate here. And it's wonderful. It's a privilege to be part of these celebrations as we give thanks for the 80 years that have passed since the consecration of our beautiful church building. And I'm enjoying hearing the memories of so many people, past ministers, church family members, people who have blessed and continue to bless our community with their faithfulness, their encouragement and their courage. My first impression of St Barnabas was probably as a child driving down the A38 and seeing this rather austere building. It was bold and huge and modern. It really caught the attention. You couldn't miss it. And over my years here, I have really grown to love it, but more so love the people whose story it tells, a community who are passionate about building. And it was this passion that led me to believe that God was calling me not onwards from curacy, but actually to put down roots here in this city of Gloucester that I love and that my family have called home for many hundreds of years. I feel blessed to be here. I feel blessed to have the opportunity to build up the kingdom with you all on those foundations of faithfulness, encouragement and courage that this community has shown for so many years. The Reverend Tom Lambert, the minister who led the people here to build this amazing church building, is an inspiration to me. Why? Because he was a man that showed all of those things, faithfulness, encouragement and courage. But too, he was a man of vision and a man of prayer. The Reverend Tom was a man who looked outwards. He was guided by the need that he saw that he perceived in his community. Most importantly, the Reverend Tom was a man with vision, vision for the future of God's church, which made building during the late 1930s, a time of austerity and political uncertainty as war approached possible. Without that vision rooted in faithful prayer, I imagine that many would have advised him that it was the worst time to build anything. 
But Tom cast his vision and he found people to carry it. And those people showed that same faithfulness, encouragement and courage. In 2020, we face similar times of challenge and uncertainty. The pandemic continues, we are tired and there seems to be no end in sight. And yet, like those people back in the 1930s, we are still called to build, however unrealistic that might seem. In 2020, we are called to build a church, maybe not with bricks or mortar, but with prayer, with vision, with outreach, in serving and giving, and the releasing of our gifts and talents. We can draw on the grace of God, the living word of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to make this task possible. We can also draw on the legacy of faithfulness, encouragement and courage that has brought us this far, and we will need all of these things. The Reverend Tom was clear. He said when talking about his vision for the new building, we are building not only for the present, but for the future. And that is what we are called to do. So let us cherish this gift of a vision left to us by the Reverend Tom Lambert. Let us honour him. Let us honour the people who carried his vision by continuing to build God's kingdom here for the church of the future. God bless you as we journey together into whatever God has for us next.